Hi there, this is Simon Godfrey from Tribe of Names. In 2019, I and three other musicians got together to try and record an album. It would take three years, not one, but two lineup changes and the loss of our original band name. This is our story. Hi, I'm Tom Hyatt, and I am the bass player and backing vocalist for Tribe of Names. Hi, everybody. I'm Scott, Tribe of Names, drummer, percussionist sometimes, uh, an all-around swell guy. Hello there, my name is Simon Godfrey, and I'm the guitarist and singer in Tribe of Names. I'm Carl Eisenhart, I am the guitar player in Tribe of Names. I am the new guy. We started writing the songs for uh, the Tribe of Names album uh, when we were still called Valdez. And I remember that uh, we finished the first album in 2015, which we recorded at Catapult Studios here in Pennsylvania. And it was a really good recording experience. But um, we found ourselves in the situation, uh, as most bands often do when they're signed to a label, um, as being quite in the hole, uh, monetarily wise. And so we didn't have anywhere near the kind of budget uh, for the uh, follow-up albums we did for that first album. And so we decided that what we would do is we would see if we could do it ourselves. So when it, uh, when it came to recording the album, my parts for the album, um, I was done first. Hello, it's Simon here, it's Scott, and there's, look, there's Carl. We're actually, this is the first day of recording the second Valdez album. So I think I had it the easiest, but the, the process itself was really great, super easy. Uh, Carl and, uh, and Simon came over and uh, set up shop at Metronome Studios where the drums are, where we do videos and whatnot, and uh, got it all set up and, and made it happen. And it was really interesting, most of the time anyway, what I'm familiar with, is that you record as a band and you know create scratch tracks for guitars, bass, vocals, almost as like placeholders, uh, while the drums are being tracked. Um, it was done a little bit differently this way, so drums were done first um, to click tracks and backing tracks, but not as a cohesive unit, uh, so it was it was definitely a little bit different. Your head's got to be more in the game, I think, to do it that way. Uh, about 2018, I got together with Simon one day at his place to record a guitar solo and uh, uh, on a song called "Kill Devil Hills" for the Shineback album. Uh, and he took me out for lunch, which was super nice of him. And then he asked me to join Valdez, and I was very well aware of Valdez. I had the first album. I really enjoyed it. Um, my first fear was that I would be kind of a bull in a china shop. The, my overall impression of that album was that it was quite delicate, and I'm not. Uh, also, I didn't want to overcommit myself. I was already playing in Pinnacle, which has been a progressive band that I've been in. We've done four albums, uh, and, and an acoustic group called Red that I've been in since 1997. I didn't want to overcommit myself and start letting people down and you know then get oh yeah I'm the guy that got fired from Valdez hooray uh, so I turned him down uh, which didn't go over great but uh, you know said, oh he doesn't want to play with us he's got too big an ego no it wasn't anything like that uh, I just I just really didn't want to mess anything up for anybody um, flash forward about a year and Pinnacle has sort of slowed down we're not really doing as much um, and I had my, I, I'm a school teacher, I had my job pretty well under control, and I finished my master's degree, and that was another big thing that was going on. And I thought, wow, I've got all this time. I wonder if those guys still want to have me in their band. So I called Simon up and I said, hey, remember that time? And he did, and they did. So I joined Valdez. Um, well, 
uh, from start to finish, this was intended as a va another Valdez album. And, um, you know, we, um, unfortunately, we parted ways with uh, Joe, um, Joe Cardillo. On top of that, it sort of made us sort of um, want to sort of re-decide our identity as a band, I think. Um, Joe was a huge part of Valdez and a huge part of the sound. And um, without him, we couldn't call it Valdez. I had a long conversation with, with Carl uh, and asked him point blank, I said, are you up for taking on the role or at least taking up the space that Joe had left in the band? And he didn't hesitate. He said, absolutely, I, I want this, I've got this. It did change my input into the band. All of a sudden, I didn't have to play around the keyboard parts. I had to take the keyboard parts, basically. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of, the, if you listen to the album, you'll hear a lot of sort of finger-picked lines on the guitar that were piano parts when I first heard them, and I had to kind of figure out what's the guitar version of that. Uh, because as we got started with the recording, you know, February, March of 2020, I was sending all kinds of tracks, and then I don't know if you heard there was this pandemic. One of the things of uh, recording during COVID, I, I guess this is in some ways a historical document, um, we were terrified at the beginning. We didn't know who had it, how we were getting it. Um, we, <clears throat> as uh, friends and courteous human beings, we decided to stay away from each other for about, uh, I guess it was like two months, maybe longer, maybe. And all of a sudden, we couldn't be in the same room as one another. Um, and so we thought to ourselves, okay, well then we'll just have to do this at a distance. So we were left with a half finished album written for keyboard players without a keyboard player in it. And uh, uh, that was a moment, that was probably the lowest moment in the recording of the album, that definitely the emotional nadir of the, um, uh, of the recording process. Because of the pandemic, we couldn't get together and kind of see, oh, what's gonna work? We just had to try things out and fit them in. I had to, I've always been sort of a um, hobbyist musician, you know. Um, I, uh, I buy all the crap and I do not learn how to do it. I'm not gifted like the guys in this band. I do not like pick it up like they do. I had to learn how to start editing myself and then sending, sending uh, parts. And then, then I went crazy with it and I started thinking, all right, how many different bass lines can I come up with? And it, you know, I started becoming an adaptive human being like the rest of the members of the band. But you just had to do more homework. You had to do uh, more writing and more listening. Uh, and definitely you have to communicate with the band a lot more. Uh, so we had to be, at least I did, had to be way more diligent about making sure what I was playing was working with everybody else. So when we got to the mixing stage of the album, we found ourselves uh, with a set of songs which were in some ways 60% all, all the way there because we had been pretty much mixing as we recorded. And there was a gradually a consensus about how the mix and how the band and how the album should sound. So here we are, we are actually mixing the album as we speak. I couldn't believe it. It's a year and a half since we actually started recording this bloody thing. We're, we're about, to, how far are we through this now then, chaps? Well, I can tell you exactly, I have the clipboard. <laughs> we are seven eighths of the way through. And I remember very vividly uh, Carl sitting there with a, uh, a clipboard uh, crossing off the, uh, the tracks as we went through them. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. It's taken 18 months but we're finally there. This is uh, easily the, the proudest I've been of, of a project that I've been a part of. It's such a great evolution in my career as a musician. It makes me grateful. Any, any reservations I had about joining the band when I heard those songs were long gone. I immediately said, this is great material, I wanna be part of it. Hearing the final product, it still sounds fresh and new to me to the point where it doesn't sound like a band that I'm in. I can't wait to get out live and play it to everybody out there. It's gonna be fantastic. We're really excited for it. We hope you're excited for it.
And bass has been my companion for my entire life. And I really kind of wanted to like give it a little bit of tribute on that, that. That's how like sort of being on an album like this affects me, like makes me so grateful enough to get a really big tattoo on my arm. Oh, hey, hold on. How long do I stand like this? Stop, man. Oh, <laughs> are you just gonna let me stand? <laughs>